Hi everyone, this is my 3 litre Toyota engine running between 40 and 50% on HHO water gas. This device is creating hydrogen and oxygen direct from water within the vessel, which happens to be an old coffee jar. Sat at the bottom of the jar are two sets of marine grade A4 stainless steel washers bolted together and connected to the 12 volt battery. None of the washers have contact with each other. On the lid is an exit speed fit elbow pipe going direct into the air intake manifold so the unit is under vacuum. My newer type now has an anti-flashback non-return valve and screw post electrical connectors plus an 8 amp protective fuse. This unit runs at about 7 amps. To find an inlet manifold pipe I pulled one out and checked for vacuum suction which there was and connected a T-pipe into it from the jar. This is the new modified jar with completely soldered cables from the lid connection terminal soldered right the way down to the washers. There is pressure contact at the washer end and to make a good contact from the soldered cable to the washers just tighten the nut and bolt together on the cell. I have used some Cat5 cable outer sleeve, stripped it back and slipped the sleeve over the soldered cable so as to prevent any chance of shorting in the vessel. This unit cost me about £10 to create. Separating the two cells is some insulation ceramic material so as to prevent the two cells making contact and shorting. OK, so what's the fuel? It's best to use deionized water to reduce any scaling and sediment. For roughly one litre of water I've used about a quarter of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. I haven't tried baking soda yet but will do as others have recommended it along with a teaspoon of white vinegar to keep the water and cells clean for longer. You may find that the jar will need a clean out once a week depending on mileage. I found that for roughly 200 miles I used about half an inch of water. You need to be aware that the more baking soda you mix will give you an increase in ampage draw plus heat plus increase in gas production. So a happy medium mix is required and will vary depending on your device and car's characteristics. Also I found that the warmer the cells get the more gas is produced. Plus an increase in revs from the car's engine increases alternator ampage output which also increases gas production. Here I have the new jar and non-return valve connected to a bubbler. On the lid is the exit elbow and screw power terminals connected to a 12 volt battery. As a proof of concept the washing up liquid bubbles will be lit. I've just turned the lights down so the flash can be seen more clearly. In this section I will be talking about how to make the cell. This cell has six large washers which is slightly bigger than the other cell because I'm going to get this one going in this other smaller coffee jar. It has a good solid lid for drilling and the cell will fit diagonally in the bottom which is ideal. Right here we've got uh, the bolt going into protective pipe sleeving to stop any of the washers from making contact. You can easily cut this to size using a Stanley knife. On the end of the bolt it does have to have um, a washer because the size of the head is too small for the other washers, the other washers kind of slip over it. And yeah, so you have to pop this on at one end uh, yeah, and then the pipe and then um, and then the other like fibre washers and then uh, so there's a fibre washer and then you'd place uh, the, the other washers over then. Uh, that's a 10 by 40 mil. Um, stainless steel A4 and that also is uh, a 10 by 25 mil and uh, they all fit over the sleeve and quite easily uh, some of the fibre washers I found were a little bit tight but they do go on there is on, on the ends there that's once the cells tightened up and the soldered cables wrapped around the, the plastic centre sleeve there and you tighten it up then you'll get a good connection against the washer this is uh, the side view of the washer so you get a good idea of how I've constructed them. Uh, you can see there's three small washers in between two larger washers in, in each of the segments and a fibre washer. At the I just wanted to show you the old vessel that I made uh, using just standard cable. Um, it's much better if you do solder all the cable right the way to the top. Um, because I was finding that, uh, that the copper was corroding a bit. Um, so if you look at the left you'll see that the brown cable is going to uh, the, the big washer on the left and then if you count three smaller washers to the right you'll see there's a blue cable going to the next large washer and if you carry on to the right you'll see the brown 
go into the next large washer and then the blue go into the next large washer and uh, what you'll need to do is make sure that all your browns go to positive and your blues go to negative uh, this is the new lid which will have the electrical terminals and the exit pipe surface mount fittings drilled and screwed and glued into place using araldite glue as it sets hard creating a good airtight fitting. For the preparation of cables, strip back the 2mm cable sleeving, twist together the stranded cable then solder all the way down. Make sure you get good solder joints to the inside of the lid connection terminals as good contacts are important. I found it a little tricky because it takes a lot of heat to melt the solder on the terminals and the cables together. In the end I used two soldering irons. Make sure to tin the terminals first. This means to melt some solder onto the terminals before soldering the final connection. You will find that the solder will bond more easily. This is just showing the cell sitting at the bottom of the jar and rough placement of the exit pipe and power terminals on the lid. I picked up the power terminals from Maplins but would have thought that Radio Shack would stock something similar. The pipe fittings came from a bar installation company although a plumber's merchant should be able to supply something to fit. This one has a surface mount screw fitting. Also in the future I plan to have the anti-flashback material mesh or wire housed within this elbow and also a moisture catching filter fitted to the inside of the lid on the exit pipe so as to prevent any moisture reaching the air intake manifold when the vessel warms up. In this section I'll talk about the circuit and location of the vessel within the engine bay. This circuit shows from the positive terminal going to an 8 amp fuse. This is how I have it wired at the moment but will eventually be taking the power from the fuse box. So this will mean the ignition switch from the key socket will be in circuit for safe isolation. I soldered all terminals from the battery to the fuse holder. Next is a 15 amp toggle switch which is situated within the upper area of the footwell driving position. I used 2.5 cable which is a good thick core to carry the ampage and soldered all ends onto the spade connectors for better connections. On the inside of the lid of the exit pipe I plan to use a cheap inline fuel filter first to see how it copes and will also house a flashback mesh wire in the elbows and pipe from the vessel. In this still picture of the engine bay of my car it shows my old vessel in the perfect position because it's located in a good airy space, a few inches away from the battery, the air inlet manifold and the fuse box, which is the box it's touching. Not all cars will be this simple to install, but it gives you a good idea of what to look for when determining suitable locations for the vessel. Once you have found your location, then find the jar to fit in that area and take it from there. I've noticed that some people are using bubble jars in line but I'm trying to avoid this but keep it safe as I've found there is better gas production under a direct vacuum. It's up to you. Just a quick note that some people have had problems where for the first week their car fuel efficiency was showing a definite improvement only to find that over time it deteriorated. One vessel manufacturer has suggested moving the oxygen sensor from one side of the catalytic converter to the other which he says overcomes this problem. I suppose you could also put a reset switch in line to reset that area of the engine management system or install another mapper. The great advantage of this technology is that the water that remains in the vessel stays water after use and doesn't go acid or become hazardous. Also when the HHO gas burns the only emissions and vapours are water so it burns clean meaning your exhaust fumes burn cleaner reducing your carbon emissions. This HHO device is quick, easy and cheap to make and should pay for itself over a relatively short period of time. Most gas converted vehicles store large amounts of gas in pressurised cylinders but this HHO device creates the gas from water on demand within a vacuum environment environment created by the air inlet manifold of the engine, which means only minimal amounts of gas are present in the vehicle at any one time. It's clear that the oil and energy companies do not have our, our or our planet's best interests at heart. They have bought up and withheld vast amounts of green, clean, energy efficient devices and will keep doing so if we let them. Hence the reason my research and development information is free for all other HHO builders to replicate and advance on. If we were all to work together with no energy or oil company interference, it's highly feasible that in the near future we would be running our vehicles and heating systems solely on water gas. Working together is the key. For more proof of this technology that exists elsewhere, Take a look at the motorbike that runs on water in YouTube and also check out the police department in America using these vessels. Take all necessary precautions while working on this project. Please copy and spread this information as far and wide as possible so we can all benefit from this technology. Love and peace to all.